Welcome to Life Devotions, and thank you for joining me today. Minister Forgiveness is the title of this devotion. For me, I find that the highest privilege in the work of the ministry, yes, to represent my loving Heavenly Father and His Son and the Holy Spirit living in me, as the Bible says in John 14, verse 16 through 23, how we have the Holy Spirit, the Father and the Son living in us. And what a glorious thing that we can embody the divine nature of God and grow up in the stature of Him and be transformed in His likeness and all of that. But friends, we're living on earth. We're living on earth to be ministers of His reconciling love, of His goodness, and to bring forgiveness to people who are tormented by failure and sin. And, 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 and are not knowing how to come out of it. And they're stuck in this in terrible sense of guilt and shame. Guilt is something we have before God. Shame is something we have because of defilement. And praise God, there is the blood that deals with the guilt. And there's the Holy Spirit to minister that cleansing flood in our hearts so that he removes the shame and that we can look back with thankfulness how great a love, a love the Father has bestowed on us that even though we were lost in sin, now we are found in Christ and have become, are being found in Christ and become children of God by the spirit of adoption crying in our hearts of a Father, how could we without? so great a salvation from others when we ourselves received it by love and grace. And so I want to encourage you, believe yourself to be called to be a minister of forgiveness. I pray that often from Psalm 69, Lord, do not use me as a rod for chastisement. Do not use me as a rod of chastisement. Do not use me as an instrument of judgment, but use me as an instrument of your mercy and of your forgiveness. And, and David says, do not ever let me be a source of stumbling, fathers. Friends, I really long for God to always be able to reach out through me to somebody who needs forgiveness. And I'm not saying this to boast of myself, but that is what I pursue in my day-to-day -day living. I would feel my life was meaningless unless in some way or another the Lord could stretch out his hand through me to heal, forgive somebody. So I want to encourage you. Every one of our lives are in pursuit of value, of significance, of worth. For me, it is the love of my Father that makes me feel accepted, well pleasing and, and, and significant as a child of God. I, I cannot boast in anything but His wisdom, righteousness, sanctification and redemption as 1 Corinthians talks about. So here in 1 John, chapter 5 or 16 we read if anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death he will ask and he the father will give him life for those who are committing sin not leading to death there is sin leading to death i do not say that you should pray about that he will ask that we live in such a place of oneness with our loving father that we bear his heart towards our fellow brothers and sisters because we're talking about a, a believer who's sinning here in this scripture. That we bear that spirit of mercy and forgiveness that when people come around us, they don't feel condemned, they feel forgiven. They don't feel judged for their failure, they feel cleansed from their failure. They don't feel that God is against them, but they feel he's for them. God, who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not freely with him give us all things? Who shall lay a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who shall condemn? Christ died, furthermore is risen interceding, who can therefore separate you from his love? You'll read this in Romans 8, 31. So I charge you in the Lord, think about this. Go with me to Luke chapter five, please. Luke chapter five, starting at verse 20. When he saw their faith, remember Jesus is in this home and he's talking about the kingdom of God to all the precious people, the rule and reign of God, and they're seeing it in him. 
and all of a sudden the roof tiles are removed and this man is let down by his friends before Jesus who was born lame, who couldn't walk. Yes, and Jesus then seeing their faith said, man, your sins are forgiven you. Isn't that interesting? The man's needs were his, his inability to walk, but for Jesus, his true need was forgiveness. Friends, we can all have many challenges in this life. We can all have many difficulties, and they can try to distract us from the real need that we have, and that is to walk in forgiveness before God and before one another. That we can walk in a sense, God loves me. He is with me. He is upholding me in these trials and difficulties. That we walk in peace before God. That we have peace guarding our hearts and minds. Because we're right in God's sight. My father, Johann Maasbach, he's with the Lord since September of 97. But he had had a paralyzing stroke where his whole right side was paralyzed completely. His arm, his leg, his side of his body, his face was completely dead. I went to go see him. When I saw my father, I'd never in my whole life seen my father ill. And when he's laying there in the hospital, it broke me. It just happened. It just, without me thinking I'm going to be upset or grieved, I just broke instantly when I saw him and wept and wept and I couldn't stop weeping. When I finally got myself emotionally back together, I said, Pa, how's your arm? And he picked up this arm and laid it on his belly. He said, yeah, it's a good arm, it's a good arm. He said, oh, Robert, I'm here to take good care of me. All is well. He said, I love that song. He looked beyond my fault and saw my need. And I tell you the truth, it still moves me. It's like God vroom, just came through my being and I said, Pa, can I pray for you? He said, pray, pray. And I prayed for him and prayed for him. Oh, I was so moved. He said, Amen. In other words, Amen. Then I said, okay, Pa, I love you. And I went home to where my mom is. I said, Ma, I just feel so brokenhearted. I need to go pray upstairs. Is that okay? She said, yeah, the room is there. Go. So I went upstairs on one of my knees and I wept before God for my dad. And the Lord spoke to me just like that. And he gave me Psalm 17, verse 15. Psalm 17, verse 15. That's the last verse. As for me, I will see your face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. And God said to me, all is well between Papa and me. And instantly, my yearning, burning sorrow for my dad, he took it. He took it away. All is well between Papa and me. And I went down to my, to my mom and I said, Ma, the Lord says all is well. And she says, no, I've been praying for Papa. And I have the same, all is well. I went back home to England. This is in the Netherlands. And my mom called me the next day, or I can't remember, maybe a family member, and told me that when Papa woke up the next morning, Jesus had perfectly healed him. You see, healing comes, comes like a virtue flowing through your being when you know that you're living in the loving Father's forgiveness. And healing can, can be extended when you live in loving forgiveness towards one another. To be a minister of forgiveness, friends, is so important. Jesus, seeing their faith, said, Man, your sins are forgiven you. The scribes and Pharisees, were in Luke chapter 5, verse 21, the scribes and Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this man? Uh, who is this who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? And when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to you? Your sins are forgiven you? Or to say, rise up and walk. 
But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately he rose up before them, took up what he had been lying on and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed and they glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, we have seen strange things today. Now. And this, my dear friends, is what I want to impress upon your heart. The Heavenly Father so longs for you and me to share what Jesus Christ paid such a high price to give. He died on the cross as he bore the punishment of sin to give us the power to forgive one another. It's not just, hey, I'll let it go. Yes, that's part of it, but no. I ministered to you this reconciliation with God, as it says here in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Oh, how I love these thoughts where he says, he says, uh, chapter, yeah, chapter 5. Okay, here it is, here it is, wrong page. God has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. This is verse 18, verse 19 of 2 Corinthians 5. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Now listen to this. God reconciling the world to himself by not imputing their trespasses. You see, God took all the trespasses that God could have held against us, saying, you sinned, you did wrong. That was not right. And he laid that all on Jesus. Jesus bore the pain, the shame, the guilt, and the punishment so that God could minister righteousness to us freely by his grace because the price had been paid. Oh, how God wants you and me to live within that kind of love towards one another, that we are ministers of reconciliation, ministers that bring forgiveness and righteousness with God freely by grace. And let me close with Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Listen to this, Galatians 6, verse 1. Brethren, if a man is overtaken, that means caught, and not then come confessing, you caught him. If a man is overtaken in, a tra in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself lest you also be tempted bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he's nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another, for each one shall bear his own load. In other words, he's saying, don't look down on others when you yourself are what you are by the grace of God. Have compassion, have empathy, and become one with somebody in their failing weakness and pray and believe God and minister forgiveness to them. And I'll tell you the truth, your life will gain a whole new sense of worth and value in the, as you share in the sufferings of Christ, Philippians 3.10, and you become more like him in ministering his loving forgiveness to one another. Amen. Have a good day.